Hey, what's going on, my friends? It's Dave Sharp. Welcome to Wake Up Legendary. And we've got a, another amazing guest this morning. She has snatched up, grabbed her piece of the pie, 54,000 followers on Instagram, and much more to talk about. Megan, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me. Good morning, Dave. You're, you're very welcome. You've earned it. And so uh, what were you looking to get out of all this when you first got started? Honestly, we were just on a single income household. It was really tight. We have three little kids and things are just so expensive. So I just really wanted to find a way to help out, but still be able to stay home with my babies. Mm. Um, so I was looking to just kind of help out to, you know, pay the grocery bill, if I'm honest. Yeah. Um, so I just got started and I was like, what have I got to lose? I sat on the sidelines for months watching and I just knew I had to give it a try. Yeah, so. the, the beautiful thing is, is once you, once you start bringing in extra income, streams of income, growing your income, you know, uh, eggs getting a little bit more expensive or not, you know, a, a huge deal. And that is, yeah. that is, that's a beautiful thing. It's yeah. a beautiful feeling and it has some of that financial stress, um, been uh, been loosened a little bit since you got started ha oh it, I mean, have the followers turned also into actual money they have yeah i've been so blessed that this has turned into something way bigger than i expected and i'm so grateful um yet yeah, i can buy organic eggs even it's not a stress anymore i have money in the bank for savings no more debt it's just so nice and i can breathe again which is really really nice and, and, you know, I don't know your specific results, but that that um, so, you know, just for everybody uh, who's listening, tuning in here, maybe for the first time, um, you know, I I uh, these are completely organic conversations with with guests that come on. Of course, you know, we invite you and we know little, you know, little parts of your story. But ultimately, we want our our students and clients to come on here and tell their story and uh, communicate to those of you who might be, you know, just getting started, uh, what it was like for them when, when they got started here as well. Nothing, nothing to hide and nothing, um, no, no, uh, um, you know, it's not all roses. It's not also not all great. It's not all easy. So we want you as listeners to be able to get a full perspective of what it's actually like to, to do this. And so, what were um, some of the initial challenges that came up for you, Megan, when you were getting started? We've heard a little bit about the success and the positivity. Um, what were some of the things that, that made it uh, a challenge for you, no pun intended, as you sure. got into the 15-day challenge and progressed on with your education? Yeah. So we started the 15-day challenge, and it was a little bit over my head, I felt like, at the time, because like there was all these new concepts. I had no idea what a funnel was. Like None of these words I've even heard of before. So I felt like I was kind of going to be struggling a little bit. So when I found out about the blueprints, I didn't end up purchasing them just because I really wanted that extra like hand-holding mm -hmm. um, and just to get that step-by-step -step instruction that I really like felt like I needed in order to do this. But I totally believe in digital marketing and affiliate marketing. And I knew that this was going to be something that could really work for me. I just knew that it could fit into my schedule for what I was seeing. I'm a busy mom of three little kids, all under five. Mm. And I just really needed something to work with my schedule instead of taking me away more. So yeah. I gave it a shot. Um, the learning curve was there definitely at the beginning, like it is for everyone. Um, and it did take me a little while to, you know, get my footing and gain some traction. Um, but patience is really the name of the game, honestly. Yeah. And so you've been going now for eight months. And what have been some of the kind of phases that you feel like you have gone through? And what phase do you feel like you're in now? Sure. Um, I felt like it was a little bit slow to begin, which is normal. I mean, everything takes time. And I knew that this was not going to be like an overnight success. Like we always, we always say, like, if you're in this to make money overnight, that's not realistic really so you have to have that patience and consistency and making sure you're talking to your ideal client and really connecting with them so i felt like the buildup was really good because i was able to continue tweaking things that i was doing in order to kind of find my groove mm. um, and then i started seeing some success and then it went slow for a little bit so i was a little discouraged but i'm like you know what this is it like you just have to keep going so even though things slowed down for a little bit, I just never stopped. I stayed consistent. I didn't let that discourage me or anything like that. 
Um, and then things just took off. So um, I'm so glad, like you always say, you know, like so many people end up not making it to that next phase because they get discouraged and they just kind of give up too soon, like right before something good is going to happen. Yeah. And if I would have let that kind of get in my head and get things, you know, being discouraged and been like, well, this isn't really going to work. So I might as well just stop. I never would have what I have right now. And it's amazing. Yeah, really. Each each of the challenges, I just made a comment in one of our Facebook groups last night that each of these challenges that you are going through when you're faced with, you know, something that is difficult, something that is, you know, something that is that is uh, making you feel like oh, I'm so discouraged, like I could give up over this. Like, you know, we, we often see this and you can kind of you, you can notice this language um, that we use when we are like it's a it's a familiar soundtrack that plays in our heads and it's probably the same soundtrack that plays every time something gets hard mm -hmm. uh in your life right we've all got those like whenever something gets hard we always each one of us has a soundtrack that plays i mean for some of us it can be overly positive and not realistic and some of us it can be overly negative but to try to find some sort of a healthy middle ground to where you're looking at a situation and saying this is hard and as I said last night, you know, I, I posted this literally, I'll, I'll share it here real quick. I posted this literally in, in a Facebook group last night, somebody was having an issue in our business blueprints group and just kind of, you know, kind of, uh, she was looking for, um, different affiliate programs and was getting denied because she was, she was new. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and, and quite frankly, probably hadn't looked into that many, right? Most of us are in our first week or so. And we, and it's like, that's a pimple on the freckle of a gnat's ass. I say in comparison <laughs> to how long your career is actually going to be. But I said, Amber, you learned a valuable lesson. If there's a question about whether a company's affiliate program is active, send a simple email with that question. Mm -hmm. Then ask if there's any requirements that it, that are not clear on their sites. You've run it. Here's the important part. You've run into a few little roadblocks and there will be many more. You're currently mm -hmm. experiencing the exact difference between a success story and someone who quits, but has an equal amount of potential, which is important. One simply didn't quit, but instead became a master at solving problems and learning from mistakes. Right. And then I went, went on to give her a pro tip. Um, and so how many times do you think you've been in that situation to where it was like a crossroads? And even though it was a small little thing, mm -hmm. you were frustrated. And if you let it snowball, it could have eventually led you to giving up. How many times do you feel like you've been in that sort of a situation here over the last eight months? Well, in life, that happens quite a bit, obviously. Um, but in this business, I definitely have hit roadblocks and had my you know, pitfalls and had struggles with things, but I just am a problem solver and I really don't like taking no for an answer. Um, and I just kind of am determined. I, when I do something, I like put my all into it. So it's just like not in me to really give up when it's something I know is going to be for the benefit of me. And I really like, like I said, I do not like taking no for an answer. So I am a problem solver and I'm going to try to figure it out one way or another. Yeah. So that happens daily, right? I mean, always. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So it's a daily thing. Every day you, as entrepreneurs, you can get up. That's the difference between an entrepreneur and employee. That's the core difference, right? Is that mm -hmm. when we go to work, we're going there to mostly take orders and have somebody else do the thinking for us, have somebody else do the problem solving for us. Mm -hmm. And as an entrepreneur, nobody's there to do that for you. Your yeah, success you will be determined whether you problem solve. Right. I, I want to say something real quick, folks. I will never DM you. My Instagram's not hacked. Uh, it's it's people who are posing as scammers. Please be careful. Don't think that I'm mm -hmm. wasting my time DMing you about some crypto scam. Come on, folks. Please. 
please be careful out here on the internet. Same for me. I have so many scammers out there and so many people have gotten taken advantage of through this and I'm like heartbroken over it. I don't know yeah. why they are it's wasting life. time, but yeah. I do not do crypto either. <laughs> right. Guys, please, please, please use common sense. I'm not DMing you at 11 p.m. at night about <laughs> something. Or Please please be careful and spread the word. If you see somebody who is asking if I'm DMing them, I don't send direct messages. I don't, I don't DM people on social media for this exact reason. If, if an email from me doesn't come from legendarymarketer.com, Dave at legendarymarketer.com, support it. It's not me. So please, please, please people be careful. All right. Isn't it, isn't it crazy out here? It's just part of the world that we have to like live in and talk about and warn people about. Um, it, it's, it's, we live in a place to where, isn't it, isn't it ironic that, um, th these are real scams. This is an actual scam when people are DMing you yeah. posing as somebody that's identity theft. That's, right. that's fraud. That's right. not just a scam. That's cr a crime. So yeah. I hope that those of you who are doing that, if you're doing that, you understand that this is a crime if you do that. If you're yeah. posing as somebody and trying to get somebody to send you money, that's not a scam. That's a crime. And yeah. and, 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 and mm, 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 people are playing with fire out here. I know. So, so what does it feel like knowing that there's so many different things that you can be doing with your, your time in your life and that you're doing something that I would assume is not only paying you, but is also providing some fulfillment oh, yeah. so much so that people are, are, are know that, that you have people's trust, that you're delivering value. So they're posing as you, mm -hmm. how does it feel now to, to be in this position to go from a, I would assume a stay-at-home mom before this, right? At sound, mm -hmm. you said one sing, one income household. Yeah. To now, my lord, you're a business. I you're know, not just cool. a business woman, but you have an entire brand and business going on here within eight months. How does all that feel? Well, it pretty feels pretty darn good. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> Um, but it is, nobody's more surprised than my husband. Cause he was like, I don't know about this, my kid. Talk about, <laughs> say more about that. Um, it's funny because so many people are like, my husband doesn't think that, you know, this is really a thing and that this is not going to go anywhere. I'm like, girl, you are preaching to the choir because my husband was not a believer in this either. And when I started paying the mortgage, he was like, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> I take it all back. <laughs> <laughs> it really is the the number one way to get your spouse's support is just, you know, I, 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 there's no magical thing you're going to say to them that's going to suddenly get them to, oh my God, yes. But when you slap down a check or a deposit <laughs> in a bank account, it just, it, it's it like, good. oh my God, <laughs> wow, honey, the support just pours in. You wouldn't believe it, yeah. you know, how much that, that works. Yeah. Um, it's just getting people over that initial hump to where they can get some results. What was it like when you first started getting results inside of your household and inside of your own? How did you navigate? Did you run right to your husband and show him? Or, I played you it know? cool. I played it cool. I was like, yeah, so I think I just I just want to show you that I just made a deposit today and it was just to help out a little bit. And he was like, what? Like, what? So it was, it's been nice. And right. it is, like you said before, it gives, I was a stay-at-home mom for years prior to this. Um, you still are, right? I mean, I still am. That's what I'm doing. My babies are right over there. We actually are, I enlisted grandma and grandpa's help because like I said, my little, my daughter is sick right now and she just caught something last minute. And I'm like, I have canceled on Dave so many times. I'm like, I cannot cancel again. <laughs> Cause every time I come on this show the, or the last couple of times I've been invited, my daughter gets sick or my son gets sick or my little one gets sick. Cause I have three and I'm like, what are the odds that this happens literally the night before again? So anyways, but yes, I am still a stay at home mom and it really just does bring so much fulfillment. It's so nice to be able to like, help out but also have something for me because i feel like being a mom you're i'm home so much and i'm everything revolves around my kids constantly which i love and that's what i wanted fully for my whole life like i I've, this was my dream you know but then to have 
this added into the mix where I can spend a couple hours a day on it and to be able to bring in an income that benefits my children and I can yeah. like pour into them all like resources and activities that I wouldn't have been able to be able to have them signed up for. Like I signed up my two-year-old for like a tumbling class. She doesn't do anything. I'm there with her, but like I'm paying for it. It's, it's kind of a waste. Yeah, but I can do it, you know, and I don't feel guilty about it. It's, and a, it's so an investment. Nice. It's yes. an investment into you and your children. And yes. do you know that the, it's so often, I tell this just, and I'd like to tell this to everybody coming through who's a student who's wondering, is this a cost? Is this, uh, uh, uh. when's the last time you act, not, not bought something for yourself, not bought a item, a purse, a materialistic thing, a, a, a wallet, a watch. Um, mm -hmm. When's the last time you invested in yourself? Right. No, college. And I'm not even talking about, I'm not even talking about external look because, hey, I got a haircut. Okay. Yeah. I got a massage. I got a little <laughs> filler, whatever. Look, I'm talking about invested into you, into mm -hmm. your growth, into yeah. what you know, into your knowledge, into your skills, the mm -hmm. very thing that creates money, that right. creates income. When is the last time you actually made a constructive investment? I would ask everybody here on this and drop a comment. When's the last time you can remember that you made a constructive investment into your skills, into your knowledge? into right and so yeah. when we start to when we actually honestly ask that question and answer it a lot of us can get a real insight into why we're stuck mm -hmm. why we feel stuck yeah why we feel like as a stay-at-home mom or dad you only have one identity or which is taking care of little people or right. why <laughs> why you as a 25-year employee of a company feel you know stuck unfulfilled because when's the last time that you made what, same thing in your marriage. I w I've been stuck in my marriage many times until I started investing in it. Right. right? Still, and I'm not, I'm not talking about you know buying my wife gifts or bringing home flowers. I'm talking about hiring a coach, hiring a therapist, yeah. paying them money, sitting down for time, work talking about hard things. That's investment. Mm -hmm. In 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 investment comes with work. It comes with effort. It comes and you get out what you put in. This is the same thing that I learned getting clean oh, from true. drugs and alcohol 14 years ago. It was mm -hmm. like, okay, I'm going to get out what I put in, right? And it, yeah, and it's like, so how does it feel for you making these in being, and you just described some of it, but could you say from your perspective how your outlook now has changed on making money and it's, it's not, you have kids. It's mm -hmm. not just you want to, bigger house. It's not just you want, you're in, from what I can hear, you're investing in yourself, in your family. Right. And since doing that, things, things are changing. Things are right. different, right? Mm -hmm. You feel like you're growing in getting mm -hmm. what you want out of life. Yeah. Um, so the last time I invested myself before this was when I went to college, which I graduated, I think 12 or 13 years ago now. So it's been quite a bit of time. Um, and I was doing that. I was going on that path. I went to school for interior design and architecture. Um, and I was doing that and I was doing well, but it was just like so time consuming and it was stressing me out like crazy. I had too much responsibility. I was like head of the commercial department of a design build company downtown and it was so stressful. And when I started having kids, I'm like, there is no way this is sustainable for me. Yeah. So I knew that there had to be something else um, that I had to invest in in order mm. to be able to get that fulfillment for me as a person in general, um, not just to make money, but also for just like, I need to be able to learn something and grow and to be able to, you know, I can't just like, you know, you need something to stretch yourself when you're a mom, because otherwise you're just talking to a two-year-old like all day long. And it's yeah. a little bit crazy. So and you needed to pivot too, because yeah. what was appropriate for one phase of your life wasn't appropriate anymore. Right. You, you invested right. early on right. a, a, in your education and spent the time to get that degree and you got a job mm -hmm. and, and that paid your bills and took care of you. And, and that's right. wonderful. And now you have children 
and you have Our different priorities. priorities. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And, yeah. and I, I learned that in, in my, my recovery, what was appropriate for one phase was not appropriate for the next. Like I oh, needed true. to, I needed to switch it up. I needed to change things up. Right. I needed to go back to the basics and learn something new in order to go through this new phase of life I'm in. Mm -hmm. And, and, um, I see so many people right now and they're flooding into our community who are at a new phase of life, but have not made new investments right. to make a new pivot. Right? right. And you're wondering, well, why, why do I feel stuck in this new phase of life? Well, because you have to make new investments in order to learn new skills, because now if you want something different, you want to be able to work from home. You, you have to learn the skills to be able to do that if you don't right. want to go into the office anymore. What's appropriate for one phase of your life may not be appropriate for the next. Right. Yeah, you can't stay static. If you want change, you have to actively pursue change. Nothing is going to be like handed to you and nothing is going to be, you know, easy necessarily. But you have to put yourself out there and learn something new in order to better your situation. So, like I said you know, investing in this course was something that I did for my benefit because I saw the potential there and I knew that I would be able to grow from this and learn something new. I developed all these skills from taking this course and I'm like so proud of myself for like learning all these new things. Like I feel so accomplished. Like when you're in school, you're just like, I was like one of those annoying people that like really strive to get straight A's. So um, <laughs> being able to like, accomplish something with this and to learn something new and try to like master it almost in a way is super fulfilling. And I'm so proud of myself that I've been able to figure all this out. It is. It is. <laughs> and for me as a non, as a non A student, <laughs> a non, you know, I, I, and it really was just because, um, the way it was being, the, the, the way school was set up, I wasn't good at that particular because my comprehension sucks. So like taking tests and studying, like I can, in the moment I'm intelligent, very yeah. intelligent, but it was just the style of teaching and learning there. Sure. But, um, but uh, when I got into this, because I could kind of do it how I wanted, I could do it standing up. I could do it, you know, I could do it sitting down. I could do it at home. I could, I didn't have to sit in a chair and listen right. to a lecture and then take a test. Right. So I got good at this too. And yeah, it built yeah. a lot of self-esteem that I did not have at first. And those of you who are, you know, talking to little people all day, or you feel like your identity or self-esteem is in the, in the pits. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because you're not out making moves and stuff and being a, 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 a productive adult, or you don't feel like one, uh, for whatever reason, you just mm -hmm. feel like you're not accomplishing stuff. Well, hell yeah. You come in and learn these skills and, and I mean, you start getting good at them and people start responding positively. That makes you feel good. The money's the cherry on the top. Right. The money's what makes you really feel cool, really mm -hmm. feel like, wow, what I'm doing is is it means something in society because you, we get to, you know, pass money around that society's way of, of, of valuing things. Right. And so, yeah, wow. I'm delivering value. I'm valuable. Yeah. People are even paying me, right? Your value right. goes up. Your self-esteem goes up. It's really something. Yeah. Even at the beginning, how I mentioned, like my husband was like, I don't know about this. And like, I started and I didn't give up and he was like, this isn't really like going here. I'm like, but it makes me feel so good. Like this was before everything happened. I'm like, I feel so good about myself being able to do something different, to learn something new, to challenge myself, to grow. And he's like, okay, I'm just saying it might be a waste of your time. I'm like, okay, well, that's my time to waste. <laughs> so, um, but it's, but I'm so glad that like, I really did gain so much like value internally from this to be able to push myself out of my comfort yeah. zone. Like I'm an introvert for sure. I like have a very close friend circle of like five people. Like I don't like venturing out. I am such a homebody. So this was so outside of my comfort zone. And so it was nice to challenge myself in so many different ways, not just yeah. professionally. And it's, it's nice to be reminded that our friend, our fam, you know, spouse in particular, they can doubt, they can doubt us. They don't have to understand our dreams and our, our goals. It doesn't mean they don't love us though. Right. And sometimes uh -huh. we can get black and white with that and, and, and just think, oh, it's all or nothing. And it's really not. It's, it's just, you know, what I've learned is spouses, they care about us. They don't want us to get hurt. Sometimes they have uh, they have um, ineffective ways of communicating that. But if you want to be a successful entrepreneur, you have to be the bigger person. 
You have to ex respond exactly how you responded, have your own boundaries, have your own goals and be goal oriented, whether a spouse is on board or not. How do you think that, you know, how do you think that all of these great entrepreneurs built their business in all the face of all of this doubt and in, in, in being turned down hundreds of times, thousands of times? You hear about great entrepreneurs knocking on doors hundreds of times being turned yeah. down and finally somebody saying yes. You know, every great entrepreneur has a story. And look, if if most of us are only dealing with having to overcome the doubt of our spouse, come on, put it in perspective. That's not that bad. Right. Just deal with it, get through it, produce some results. They'll come around and it'll all, all will be well, mm -hmm. or, or we can go into complete victim, you know, pity potty mode. And guess what? We never win. Right. We never win like that. Everybody else, we feel like, you know, we can never, we begin to go into massive victim mode right there. Right. And, and, uh, nobody wins. Your children don't win. Your spouse yeah. doesn't win. You don't win. Most right. Importantly, we want to talk right. about self-esteem, you know, killer. That's it. It's not about other, what other people say, mm -hmm. even spouse. It's what yeah. you do that builds self-esteem. You can mm -hmm. build amazing self-esteem in the, in the face of everybody doubting you, because <laughs> guess what? Just like the, the, the old saying goes, First, they'll laugh at you and doubt you, and then they'll come around and join you. <laughs> right? Yeah, that's, that's true. I'm of course, it's true. Yeah. I've been on this journey for the past 10 years. Right. Everybody who, or more, right? Everybody who doubted me now has respect for me. Right. Because I had respect for myself the whole time. Right. And not letting anyone kind of deter you from what you, you know, really wanted and your goals for your life and all that. So, yeah. Yeah. We cool. train people how to treat us, you know, oh, we train true. Yeah. how to treat us. Very we true. train our customers how to treat us. We train our audience how to treat us. We train our spouses how to treat us. I mean, we are, this is the entrepreneurship really can give us many gifts beyond just making money. It can really teach us how to become the leader of our own life because ultimately you know, we, we, we train people how to treat us and we can design both our business and our lives in any way that we want. Mm -hmm. It's pretty cool. <laughs> there's no rules. I mean, one of my favorite things to remind everybody of is there's no rules. There's no rules. Mm -hmm. All the rules in your life were made up by people that are no smarter than you. Right. That's so true. Isn't that something? And sometimes we yeah. follow them like they're like, you know, like they're like, you know, laws. And sure, there are laws we must follow. And that's part of being a, a, a part of a society. But there's a difference between laws and rules. Very true. That's so true. <laughs> yeah, no, that's a good point. That so, is a good point. Yeah, we're I, I told be... a certain thing from like one aspect when we're growing up, like the smart way to do things the right way. This is the path you need to follow. And it's not for everyone. And it's not the only way to do things. And if you never, you know, take a chance and try something different and then you kind of get pigeonholed yeah. and you can stunt your growth, honestly. Yeah. Emotionally, be... physically, professionally, all of it. So it's so true. So I want to be respectful of your time. I know that the grandparents are helping out with the kiddos. <laughs> So um, do, do you have to go now or can we have another 10 minutes to talk about Instagram? I'm good. Okay. Um, so Instagram, talk yeah. to us about it. What's been, when did you kind of discover you, you, you really per liked it, preferred it? Are you repurposing and being omnipresent and what else have you learned from marketing? Yeah, sure. So I started with Instagram because I really liked the program to begin with. Um, and I know that a lot of people see different results on TikTok and other things, but because I was most comfortable on Instagram and I understood how it worked, I started on that platform. Um, and I do repurpose to TikTok, Facebook, and Pinterest. Um, so I do have the omnipresence, which, but my main source of like income and generating more leads and all that, it comes from Instagram itself. Mm. Yeah. So what have you learned about Instagram? What, 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 what is important if somebody wanted to get started with Instagram, what would be one or two of your, your, your top of the list tips? That's a good question. Um, top of the list tips are being yourself, communicating really well with your people that you're talking to. Like I always make a really 
um, personal connection with everybody. I talk to everyone directly. I talk to them in the direct messages. That's where I lead everybody in. Um, so I, if someone's making a comment on my post, I immediately put them in the direct messages and I just start a conversation with them and show them that I'm human, honestly. Mm -hmm. um, but I talk to everyone like they're just, you know, my friend and I treat everyone with just like a regular conversation I would have with a friend and I want to help yeah. them. I want other people to succeed like I've succeeded and to be able to have these benefits of, you know, getting what they want out of their own life. But um, so you're taking basically, you're maximizing every engagement by turning that basically that comment into a direct message, private conversation uh -huh. in which you're finding out what the person is looking for and then making a recommendation for a product that you're an affiliate of. Right. So that is super important. I feel like on Instagram or sending them into your, into your funnel to both first collect yes. their email address. Yes. I actually first start with the direct messages and have a conversation with them and then organically give them, you know, access to, you know, directing them to the funnel. Um, but honestly, if people go through the funnel on Instagram, I feel like they don't really like get it and they still think that it might be like a hoax or something like that. And so they really like having that personal connection. And I feel like so many people that I talk to on Instagram are like, oh my gosh, thank you so much for like asking a question about me or, um, you know, showing me that you're just a regular mom. Like this is such a scary thing or actually responded in general. So I feel like I take that extra um, time to connect with everybody and just have that personal, personal connection first which I think is really helpful on the platform because that's how I make most of my conversions. Mm. Um, but another thing on there is I really do a lot in my stories. I think that's really important to be able to show your like life in there and to show mm. how what you're doing is benefiting you, I guess, and also teaching people in there that, mm. you know, if they're feeling stuck or, um, they're struggling with these same things, like just showing them that and having a personal connection through your stories is also super important in my opinion for Instagram. Do you feel that people are watching? I mean, you're do so you're doing posts, reels and stories, all three kind of, or, Less or not posts. Really, I'm oh. doing reels and stories mainly. And stories. Okay. Okay. Um, and so do you feel that, I mean, obviously your stories only get seen by the people who are already following you. So that's the thing about stories, right? I think it goes beyond that. Are they pushing it out now, your stories? I know your reels are getting pushed out to a yeah, core audience. Yeah, I think They're that when I check my um, my insights for my stories, I, I get pushed out to people that don't follow me. Wow. I don't want to say new... that. I mean, if I'm totally wrong, but I swear that that's happening. That would be that would be new. Um, but so if I'm wrong, I'm totally wrong, and yeah, it's I'm fine. Have to fact check it myself. But I feel like it reaches beyond your following. But it doesn't matter because I mean, the the bottom line is 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 um, the more times you're in front of people, even if it's the same people, it's 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 fine because what happens with a lot of a lot of I think you know, people convert it in different ways. Some people see something one time and are like, it, it resonates and they're, they're like, oh, yeah, I'm going to go sign up They're right. You know, they're ready to go. Other people. And I would say the majority of people might follow you and see multiple things from you, right. Right? hear from you multiple times. That's another part of the don't quit before the miracle happens. Because I mean, People are literally watching you. Right. They're they're making a decision. They're going to take action, but yeah. they might just not do it today. But right. if you stop, then you've just lost everybody who's it. You kind of can consider it like a pipeline, mm -hmm. right? It's like a pipeline of people who are getting ready to get ready to yeah. take action. And they're watching, they're following you. Once you follow somebody, very rarely do people unfollow. Mm -hmm. Rarely. Right. Unless, I mean, think about it. Think about your own social media. Like rare, we don't go in and actively unfollow right. people. We just don't. It's not right. part of our, it's not part of our, our, our activity, our behavior on social media. Yeah. And, unless we're intentional with it. And so they're going to get exposed to you over and over. It's a natural thing. It's like mm -hmm. how social media just works. You get those, it's how we feel like we're building real connections with people when we have not even met them. Right. right. Mm -hmm. And you're going to notice this too, when you come to one of our events or whatever, if you meet people from your audience, 
somehow, some way in the future, they'll know you. They'll be like, oh my God. Like, yeah. and you'll be like, hi, nice to meet you. Right. Because right. you're nurturing the audience through all yes. these different outlets, which is, it, I think, yeah. so important with stories. You're nurturing the audience. You're, um, you know, building that growth and connection yeah. and the trust factor and all of that. So I think, yeah, omnipresence within one platform even is super important. That's why I like to yeah. use stories and the direct messages and the reels itself. And the same thing on Facebook. I mean, yeah. the same thing on Facebook. You could even do it if you're in, and, and I'm not saying that you have to do, um, uh, uh, you know, all everything on every platform, but I'll tell you what, if you, if you have a reel that you posted on Instagram and a story, download the dang story. If you're on Facebook right. and upload that same story onto Facebook. Right. I have everything just pushed over that platform. Do you use repurpose.io or something for that? I don't. Well, I post everything on TikTok first, and then I download it, take off the watermark, and then upload it onto Instagram. But then I have it auto uploaded onto Facebook, okay. and then even, I separately even stories, do it. even stories. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you can auto upload stories onto, yeah. onto Facebook. Okay, there you go. Yeah, so that's yeah, man. I mean, obviously those two work together because right. Facebook owns Instagram, and and but but um. Yeah, it's just as easy to 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 download those if you needed to. Um, it, you know, uh, I remember Ty Lopez. He would always have his stories on every single platform, including Snapchat. You know, not of us, not we don't. A lot of us here in this community don't really use Snapchat. Um, yeah. But uh, um, hey, you know, not saying that I'm it's not presence. something you can try. <laughs> you know, it's not something you can try. Come back, report back to us while you're doing that. We're going to focus on the platforms we know work. Right. Um, so listen, let's wrap up here and, and let you get back to your kiddos. Um, Megan, it's been absolutely wonderful to, to catch up with you. What would you share with somebody who's skeptical and new and is wondering if this is really worth, you know, take us back to that, that eight months ago, for those of you who are wondering, uh, when, when Megan couldn't buy organic eggs and, and, and was, <laughs> was struggling with affording groceries just as it is. Now she's not only buying groceries uh, at will, but also um, all organic, she says. Well, Take not all organic, but you know. Yeah. <laughs> the important ones. <laughs> right, I right. could, I just don't. <laughs> right. I want to keep well, that's, some of the money. That's good to know. <laughs> you could, but you... Take us back to when you when none of that was true and speak to somebody who's sitting in your seat who may be listening to Wake Up Legendary today and uh, talk about, you know, what a life changing decision this could be for them if they decide to commit. Yeah, um, honestly, there's you're, you're not going to get any success by staying where you are and staying static and trying something new is the best way to experience growth personally and professionally. So if you are not happy with where you're at currently, do something different. Try something new. Get out of your comfort zone. I had to do that. Um, and so everybody does when they try something new. And it's so important to, you know, go for it. So don't let your doubts and your insecurities and other people telling you that it's not going to go anywhere to get in your way. Honestly, it, just try it. I'm so grateful to have, you know, committed and went straight for it because I have benefited so much from it. And I'm so grateful. Yeah. And the so anxiety that I feel or that I had felt prior, and I'm like a very anxious person in general, was not a good feeling. So the amount of anxiety that I have less now because of this help that we've been able to get from this program, I mean, it's everything. So yeah. don't yeah. give up. Well, as a fellow anxiety ridden person, I, I, uh, we, we, we just get anxiety about different things right now. Right. It's, it's, <laughs> right like, yeah, I still have three kids. So I mean, I still have a lot of anxiety. <laughs> right, right, right. There's, there's, there's levels of anxiety, like intensity and financial anxiety has got to be like one of the worst. So I'm it really, some, some of that, it stuff. was like paralyzing. So yes, that's a big benefit for it for sure. Yeah. All right. Well, um, enjoy your, your kiddos and, and of course you. the grandparents and, uh, we're appreciative of them that they helped out. So you could join us today, come Thank back, you. we'll schedule another one in the future. Sounds and uh, until then stay legendary, Megan. Sounds good. Bye Dave. All right, bye. All right, my friends, you can follow Megan at make money with Megan. Holy smokes. Cool. 
Instagram, make money with Megan. Um, spelled exactly how it sounds. Megan is M-E-G-A-N. Make money with Megan. All right, my friends, get on out of here. It's Monday. Be productive. Be legendary. We'll be back here tomorrow for another episode. If you're in the uh, challenge, keep going. Fit, finish it. Watch Wake Up Legendary episodes and replays. If you're waiting for an appointment with your advisor, we've got so many people who are coming through trying to soak up this challenge and this community and this information that we have. Be patient, okay? There's so much here to absorb and to learn. So grab a couple of replays. Grab a, a bucket a popcorn or something of wake up legendary listen to it on the podcast you can find it on all major podcast platforms just type in wake up legendary chill out chill out this is the start of something amazing for you and a real defining moment at least it has the potential to be if you just stay still for a moment and learn these skills and then we'll show you how to apply them get out of here take care peace